everybody, this is Rob Essler for our second tutorial in learning how to program with audio and music. So we pick up where we left off from the first tutorial. We had a basic sound program that is creating new oscillator, noise generator, bandpass filter, our frequency, and our amplitude. And we put, we put them down in our line of code, a couple lines of code inside of uh, this little block here. And we were able to hear sine wave and no filtered noise. And we got that. So now we're going to talk about um, classes, methods, and members. Um, so classes are a way of creating your own data type in any programming language that is object oriented. And the idea is that classes are more or less blueprints for what we call objects. And objects do things. So in our library, our objects or our classes are basically things like oscillators and filters and noise generators and um, some other higher level things like FFT and um, delays and all the fun stuff that you use to make audio. So um, in fact, in this dummy sketch that we used from last time, there is an actual class that we have to use. So this is a class called My Music. And it gets used up in the processing area, which this is all the stuff that processing uses to generate that window and the background color and any of the shapes that we're going to draw and um, all that stuff. So we actually need to create it here and we're going to use it here. If you like, you can actually put this in another tab. So we'll just copy it, delete it, create a new tab and call it um, my music tab. It doesn't really matter what you call it. What does matter is the name of your class. So <clears throat> you remember how we created uh, variables last time, gave them a name. This time we're giving a class, we're giving it a name. All right, and this is just something that's required. This is part of what we call inheritance. It just needs to be there. It means that it extends another class or inherits another class. So um, a few things that have to go in here because of that um, is this thing called run algorithm, this block of code, and this block of code called free. All right, so this should function the same even though it's in a different tab and it cleans up our code a little bit if you like to work that way. And now all we have to do is declare our class here. So we're saying my music equals music, uh, or I'm sorry, my music and call, I'm calling it music. And then I just reference it down here in the setup function in processing. So the setup function comes from processing. And what processing does is it more or less it co what's called compiles the code um, into Java. And this is technically all Java anyway. It's still being read as Java. But um, processing kind of cleans it up to make it easier to read and understand and does a lot of really great stuff for you, especially when you're learning. So. What we have to do is we just make that, remember that new statement that we had in here, that we did over here? We're just doing it right here. And then um, we have to actually get something called PD. That's just from the engine. <coughs> and we start the engine. So it basically it starts the audio to go to your hardware. These are already in the template. So as long as you keep them there, as well as this dispose method, right? as long as those are there, your everything should be fine. And so now we're working on the, pro this is the processing side, all the stuff that's going in that window. And this is the music side. Okay, so these are, those are two ways you can work. You can use tabs for new classes if you want to. So we have a new class that we made from the dummy template. And everything that is now in this class becomes a member of the class. And you can, you can make members um, private or you can make them public. So if I have a member that's like a number, now these are only able to be accessed inside of my class. 
right. this will become important later but for now we don't really worry about it because we're the owners of this code so we're good so we have our class right we named our class and we gave them this little bit that inherits from the library that we have to and then you notice we have some blocks of code here right and these are called methods right. so these are variables we already talked about those well, we're now called them member variables and these are methods so anything in bes in, in between the um, braces Right, is code that belongs to a method. And um, sometimes you don't ever see the method being used, and sometimes you exclusively see the methods being used. So this run algorithm method, you won't really ever, uh, what we would call, call uh, calling the method. You won't ever call run algorithm explicitly. It does that inside of the, the library. Um, but you, we are going to use these two this method here called set freak right this is what we're going to use to talk to pd um, for p3 from processing right so we're going to actually use it inside the draw method and use our mouse to change our frequencies now and so in order to do this we have to cr we um we have to use the term synchronized which allows you to um, just synchronize between processing and audio. Well, that's another topic later. It's called threading, but uh, right now, or s thread safe code. Uh, but for right now, we just make sure that you have that there and it will keep everything nice and safe for you. And the way that a function works is that it has some sort of nomenclature before it, like synchronized or public or private. Um, and those just tell the, the, the compiler how to define that little bit of code. Okay, so this bit here says it is synchronized, meaning that only one thing or thread or process can access it at a time. It's something that we take for granted because it happens so often in software, but we do have to just make sure that it's safe to access are variables that we want to change to make our software interesting and do something cool. Okay, so then the next term is typically what's called the return type, or what does the function actually give us back, right? So we, we give it some data and it sends us some data back. So this is what's called the return type. Uh, for now, for this one, it is void, means it doesn't return anything, nothing. And this one, here you see has float and that means it returns a float and if you notice that returns the frequency variable which is we declared up here right. so this are what we call getters and setters so these things set variables and they retrieve variables so that they can be protected by this thing called synchronized okay and we can also make our uh, synchronized variables private so that they um, can only be accessed inside of the class. And then you can only use these functions to update them, change them, or get them, you know, return them from the audio side of things. The next little bit is what you call your function. Okay. so. Um, so we have some sort of def definition of what the function, is it public, private, synchronized, final, static, all these things that we won't get into in too much detail right now. Um, the return type, the name of the function, and then inside the parentheses is the arguments or what type of data are you sending into the function? And then you put that inside of braces. Okay, and that what's, well, that's what makes a complete function. Okay, so in functions that have void or nothing that's returned, you, need, you don't need anything. Right? This, this, will, whoops. this will still work. It, it won't work the way we want it to, but it, it will still, the compiler, the Java compiler, which is what basically puts all your code together and runs on your computer, doesn't care because it's not looking to return anything. It, it won't function the way you want to but it will still compile. 
I won't give you an error. Um, so what this function is doing is it's synchronizing return type void called set frequency. And then we're, we're passing data through it, which is the type float. And we gave it a name, just F1. And that's just what was there from the dummy template. Probably just want to give it a name like F um, so that we're, we're explicit that it's a frequency. I have to change it here. And now F is set to our frequency. So remember up here we had frequency equals 300. Right? That we gave it an initial value, otherwise known as initializing our variable. Now here we're giving it a new value. So we're actually changing the value based on something that we're going to put in our processing side. Okay, then we need to get that value once it's changed. So the get frequency function is also synchronized. So it can talk to processing safely and it returns a floating point number or a decimal number and we call it get frequency. So this is a really common design pattern of having set something, get something. And then you put it the parentheses. No, uh, you put the braces, right? And then you have to have the word return. And when you type it in, it will, uh, on your own functions, it will turn blue because it's a, it's, a, it's a keyword that's used in the language. And it returns something that is a float. And in this case, we want to return the frequency. Okay, so why do we do that? What is the point of this? Why don't we just use frequency here? Well, because <clears throat> the frequency here, right, is a private float. And if we're not synchronized, means that when we try to get it here, it's possible frequency might be trying to set it here. And then we might have a deadlock. It's a really rare case. You, you probably could do it and get away with it for a long time. If you start writing lots of code, that's not what's called thread safe. That's when you start to get lots of, of, of issues. And those are really hard to track down. So we just do this and we try to keep it as safe as we can. So now you see we're getting the frequency here. And now we're going to set the frequency. So we just call what's called, we call the method get frequency. And that gives us a double, I'm sorry, a floating point number. So we call get frequency, and that gets us a floating point number, which is what this line needs inside of its argument. Now you can see that bandpass has a member me uh, a method called set center frequency that takes a double or float. So let me show you how you might determine that. If you go to the GitHub and you go to the source, we're just going to go to bandpass, which is the first one on the list. And this is what the code looks like underneath. But it's all just member functions. So I, I've created a class called bandpass, and I've created member functions. And you'll see the set center frequency, right? So now it's a, a public function, meaning that anyone can access it that has created the object. It returns nothing, so it's void. I called it set center frequency. So we know bandpass filters have a center frequency that tell us where it's going to cut off. And then it takes a double, which I use the variable CF. Right, and then it gets passed to this thing called center frequency and blah, blah, blah. That, that part is under, very underneath the behind the scenes kind of thing. So this dot here becomes how we call methods. So now the way we do that in processing is we're going to, um, I'm going to write some code that you're just going to copy. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about what it is in a second and let's see let's go from 100 to 500 okay <clears throat> so we have a, a variable now called freak on the on the processing side and these are different 
variables. So the, this is not the same as this. And why is that? Because, not just because it's in a new tab, but it's inside of a class. And we made it private. So these two are independent, but it might be confusing. So you may want to use different terminology if it's going to confuse you. So you, maybe here you're just going to call it um, like filter frequency. And you just give it an initial value. And then we're just going to use that down here <coughs> so we know what it's doing a little more explicitly. Your variables should basically say what they are and use this thing called step case. So typically variables start lowercase and then you have an uppercase for the next word. Um, that's just a common coding style that a lot of people are using. Uh, some people use underscores, some, uh, but I think step case is, is easier to read and it looks nicer. So now we're just using this function or this method called map. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna take our mouse position inside the window um, and then basically uh, scale it to from zero to the width of the window and then put it into the range of 100 to 500. So that's gonna set our filter frequency, which is what we're on right now, yeah. To, and, um, and then we're gonna send it to our audio layer over here by using the set frequency after we get it. So here we're going to now do music dot set frequency filter freak and there we go so now our mouse should map where it is in the window to this range here and if you want to know more about map if you're one of those kinds of people go to the processing website Go to reference. Don't even try to look for it. Search map. It's the second one. And it tells you what all these uh, arguments mean. So this is what they're calling them parameters. They're parameters or arguments or inputs, all sorts of names for it. And this is what they all mean. So what's the incoming value to be converted? It's our mouse. Uh, what's the lower bound of the range, the upper bound of the range, and then what do you want to convert it to, or the target range. And this is just a method that exists in processing that's there for you. You could do it by hand if you wanted to. You could make your own method called map. It wouldn't work. You'd have to call it my map or something. And then, so anyway, this is going to map our frequency to our filter frequency, and then we're going to call the set frequency function from our music, which is our my music class, or our object and right so we've created my music it has a member called set frequency which is synchronized and we're going to use it here okay so that dot means it belongs to music which is a class of type my music which is what we defined here all right so let's see if this works Excellent. So that was successful. Now let's say we have this other amplitude. Let's now use that on the Y axis. So we're going to need two more getter and setters. So we're just going to copy them and change their name. So set amp. And we're going to set amp to the input of A. And we're going to get amp. And we're going to set return amp. And up here, we're just going to now get amp. And we're going to go over here and we're going to do another map. Oh, we need a new variable. And we'll just call this audio amp 
and we'll just call it, we'll just give it an initial value of one. So this is going to be our volume knob. So audio amp equals map mouse y. Now this is the y-axis of our window, and we're going to map it to the height, and it should go from zero to one. Don't go above one because it will clip and just potentially distort. All right, and then we're going to set our amplitude by calling the music dot set amp audio and give it the input of audio amp and now it's going to do the same thing so it's going to map it to our x to our y axis based on the height of the window from 0 to 1 and we're going to take that value and send it to our music object which belong which then has a member called set amp which takes the input of a floating point which is going to be audio amp and then that ends up over here right so we set the amp it sets it to amp here and then we get it here which returns the value there so let's try it okay and did you notice anything about that it's backwards so processing does height from the top down or the window is from the top down so this should now be nothing okay so that works better that's common in processing is that you'll find things didn't work the way that they should and you need to debug that and this is something I should have done in the first place um, you also could have done this and I believe if you just switch the numbers it should have been fine let's just see yeah. so yeah so in the upper left is where the height starts and the height goes down to create the window and X goes over so this one worked fine but this one did not so we had to change the numbers in some way so instead you know you can just flip the numbers or you can flip these two now this code works this code works but yeah so notice that it it's just now we're not drawing anything graphically right but um, we are at at least we are um, using the mouse input right to to change something on our audio side okay let's just do one simple thing um, for fun just to make it now somewhat interesting and we're going to change the background color based on the filter frequency and this is going to require a little bit of math um, and a new concept actually so we're gonna um, just make an integer call it color Ooh, ah. color equals and we're gonna fill that in later and then ah, that doesn't work because color is a keyword so we're gonna do um, my color All right, and we're going to set my color equal to um, why doesn't it like that? Oh, yeah. Okay, so it just needs a number. Uh, okay, so we're going to say let's scale the frequency. So let's just say um, frequencies from one hundred to five hundred. So let's just do map uh, filter freak. And we're going to map that to um, the lowest will be 100, the highest will be 500. And 
then we want to scale it between 0 and 255. And it doesn't like that because it needs an int. Doesn't like that one. Oh, doesn't like it because that. There we go. Okay, so the reason why that didn't like that is that map returns a floating point number, and that's what we did up here, and it didn't didn't mind. But this has to be an integer because colors are from zero to two fifty five, so you can't have a color that's fifty point two three. It's fifty or it's fifty one. And that's what integers are. And so we have to do this little thing here, which is called casting. And this is just going to take this number and turn it into an integer. And that's all we really care about anyways. So it's going to take the filter frequency, which starts at 100, goes to 500, and then scale it to 0 to 255. And hopefully then our frequency, when we move it back and forth, should change the color of our window. Right, so uh, we could also do it RGB. That should work. So red, green, blue. And so we'll change the red inflection. I actually have no idea why that looks like that. I'm not a color guy. I'm an audio guy. There we go. Okay, so that's just the basic um, background, right? There's a whole list of shapes that you can use. So if we just find shapes, well, that's not going to help. They're right here. 2D primitives, they're called, so triangles and squares. So you can make all sorts of shapes. Just follow the, um, so if you wanted to create a rectangle or square, right? Follow their little code examples, which is literally just copying this and putting numbers in. And um, you can do the same thing with map here to get different sizes or colors for the shape, um, whatever you want. So you can now combine processing tutorials with audio and um, and put them together as long as you use the same format of your getters and setters or your methods and um, then calling them inside of your audio loop which is this here your audio callback as it's called and um, setting them inside of your draw function and that's the basis of everything that we're going to do so the next tutorial we'll do a little bit on object inheritance so that you can um, kind of understand the power of object-oriented programming. And then we'll go into deeper uh, digital signal processing and musical concepts with programming. So next time we'll go deeper into all these with some more higher level audio, music, and digital signal processing concepts, a little bit of math, and a touch of fun and excitement so thank you for coming today so thank you for watching today i'll be back next time with tutorials i'll see you next time